Hello everybody and welcome to the September 2019 update from Clyde Bridge Station. There's been very little work done on the layout this month, but I'll talk you through the small amounts of work that have been done. Uh, and I'm looking for a couple of <coughs> uh, suggestions from people as well as to what I can do with some completed areas. So, what I'll do is, we'll get around to where the first uh, piece of work has been done, and if you've got any comments, queries, suggestions about the layout in general, please leave them in the comments box. And thank you very much in advance for watching. The first bit of work that's been done on the layout this month is the completion down here of the, the, the concrete area at the back end of the depot. I used a different type of um, pathing ballast as opposed to what I'd done with the, the road, the paths in the middle of the, the, the sidings. And I've painted it grey and it seems to have come up a good match. There's one or two areas which um, I still need doing. And you can actually see the, that just there the now, now that I've zoomed the camera in. Which you just... Um, just there. That'll need another dropping of um, PVA on it and allow that to try it and then it'll get um, painted over. It's just a normal Dulux uh, grey paint that I've been using on the paths by the way. If I zoom the camera back out you'll see just over here I've got the, um, an old wheel set there. I won't, I'm not really sure what, if anything, I want to actually put in there. So there's a couple of suggestions. Um, oh, there's a bird there. A couple of suggestions for you, uh, from your other, as to what I might want to put in there. I'm thinking maybe another storage hut, but I'm also thinking maybe just leaving that wheel set there. I don't want to overload the, the area. So if anybody's got any suggestions to what I could put into this small area here, that would be greatly appreciated. Now you also just see visibly, and I'll just turn the camera and zoom in. Just there, I'm, I'm using a tripod for once. We have the first um, figure on the layout as well. There he is, and he's just standing uh, near the fuel point <coughs> uh, to simulate somebody ready to fill up the diesel locomotives with fuel. So. First figure is on the layout, there will be other figures getting applied to the layout um, over the next few weeks and months. And if I zoom right back out there you can actually see the whole scene is coming together. And if I just turn the camera around this way a bit, you can see just how far I've got with the foliage, the undergrowth is just up to here. and. It's just over there as well, but that needs to be PVA down at this end here, so that'll be getting done after filming's complete. I've brought the, <coughs> the diesel shunter on here because I managed to get it going again, eventually. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start it up. There you go, you see it's just starting to go now. And then it's just derails. Hmm. I'll get a bit more power on it. At the time of filming, this is the first time I've been in the shed for a couple of weeks, I should point out. So it is a bit chilly in here. That's the noise of the heater you can hear. What we think is actually now the problem with the shunter is it's just a simple combination of two things. The track needing cleaned, which I do on a regular basis, but also... Um, the other problem might actually be to do with the power sources. I'm just going to place the shunter down there so it's out of sight again. There you go. There is actually where two dropper wires have been installed previously. You could just see them just there. And what I'm going to have to end up doing, I think, is putting another dropper, dropper wire up here. And I might put another one in at the station and might even put another one 
say around about here, or here, or in, sorry, we'll go here or in here, maybe in both. Not, it's not as big a task as what it might seem at first, by the way. I mean, yes, I know that I've ballasted there, but there's some areas where the ballast isn't glued down properly, so I reckon I can join in it at the, at the, the junction, the fish plate. So, I think that's what my problem might also be, is just simply getting some more power sources. So, that'll get worked upon, we'll get another couple of power sources put in. And we'll just try the shunter again, as I say, remember that it has... It has been cold in this shed for the last couple of weeks, so that is obviously going to be a factor in it. See, that's where it's starting to lose power. And, and I'll just turn it off there now. I'm just seeing there. That's my coat there. I'm just trying to do my best not to be in view. But what I'll do is I'll zoom in a bit. And you'll also notice as well that this sign has fell off. When I was setting up the tripod, so something else I'll have to do it in the in the meantime. But I reckon if I can get um some bus wire or dropper wire installed in there, that and possibly in two other areas that I've already pointed out, that should allow more power to the layout and thus allow me to um, operate the shunter properly. I'm not planning to buy any more locomotives by the way for the layout so um, this, what you see here and down below is the actual range of the, the locomotives. You can just see here at the depot building side of the depot uh, that I've laid down some more paths. Now that's them there, and they still need to have the PVA dropped on them, and then once that's done and dried, they'll be able to get painted the same shade of grey as has already been done at the sidings end of the depot. <coughs> the actual um, ballast that you see there is probably more suitable for making paths and the other stuff that I'd used for in between the some of the depot roads. One thing to actually be especially careful about when you're actually using it though, and this is something I've actually learned from putting that stuff down already, um, is that if you're not very careful with it, when you come to put the PVA mi water mixture down to hold it in place, it can sometimes lead to a bit of a groove, so <coughs> you may need to actually top it up afterwards. I didn't do that with one of them, so a little lesson learnt there. But um, what I'll do is I'll obviously get the PVA put down, and what we'll then do is obviously leave it, see how it's turned out, and if it needs to be topped up, it'll need to be topped up. And if I, as I've got the tripod on, I can't actually show you fully, but it has actually been extended to beyond the depot, uh, the, end, the locomotive maintenance shed, the diesel maintenance depot. That ballast, that white pathing ballast is already down beyond there. You also notice that we've got walkways made there as well. The co-op store, the supermarket you see there, I've been given a, a logo by Scott Mad um, to use on the store, but I'm having a bit of a difficulty in getting it to the correct size to then download. So I'm going to have to fiddle about with that over the next little while. The reason that I've went for ScotMid is I have to actually be very thankful here to the cooperative group and to the ScotMid supermarket which is a man which um, buys its stuff in from the co-op. This lady is set in Lancashire in 1990 and I, I sent a tweet to the co-op group asking them if they um, could tell me what society uh, was based in Lanarkshire, Motherwell, Hamilton, East Kilbride area in 1990. Now the co-op group passed me on to um, 
Scotland who were also able to supply me with a logo from around the time but as I say I'm having difficulty getting it to the right size to print off so it's something that I'll have to work on. Lanarkshire was previously served by the DL Cooperative Society but in 1981 the DL Coop merged with the St Cuthbert's Cooperative Association which was based in Edinburgh and formed the Scott Mid Co-op, the Scottish Midland Cooperative Society. They also own semi chem by the way. <coughs> so for authenticity it's, that will be a Scott Mid and what I'm hoping to eventually do is put a new bit of plastic put a new bit of plastic card on there and I'll have Scott Mid with the Co-op four leaf clover logo as you see there. Um, to the right of it. <clears throat> You'll also notice that there's a bit of fencing being put up. It's not quite apparent in this view but I'll try and zoom in a little bit more. That's not actually glued into place yet. What's going to happen with that fencing is it will eventually get glued into place and then everything that you see in that sort of triangular bit behind the fence will just be a sort of rubbish area. I might even put a tree in there as well and I'll maybe throw some rubbish in there as well and because it's um, a bit low down that bit of walling there I'll probably ex get another bit of fence going all the way around I've seen David Watson with some of the stuff that's uh, the rubbish that he's thrown onto <coughs> bits of his track at Dean Park Station so that's the sort of idea I'm going to go for as well well, we're actually on the mention of that as well. I might actually replace this co-op frontage with another co-op frontage and actually paint it blue. I haven't quite fully decided yet, but that's probably going to be a, another one. And use polystyrene cement and stick it on. Uh, and by using polystyrene cement, I should hopefully avoid the whitening of the windows that you see there. It doesn't make it look very good at all, I accept that. And if I just turn round to here, there we go, and that's what it looks like now, the Commonwealth Shopping Centre. I've still got the lettering to apply to that bit, so that'll be done in the next few days. And you'll see that by the time of the October update. Uh, I was looking for a brown, but I've ended up with a gold type colour. <coughs> But the way I've put it on, it's like it's a sort of faded gold colour. So, that's the actual colour I've been using. There we go. So we'll take that back off. And you can hear, by the way, the heater is on in the shed just to warm things up as well. <laughs> now, as always, as we're reaching the end of this month's update, it's time for me to tell you about some of the layouts that I'd like you to go and have a look at. And of course David Watson with Dean Park Station, he's just actually done another um, layout tour for you so if you could please check that out. And he also gives his thoughts on the, a couple of the modern image HSTs and Mark IIs um, in the saltire livery of Scott Rail so do check him out. Everard Junction <coughs> um, shows you how to paint a class 31 locomotive um, going through the respray of it and all that sort of process as well so if you go and check that out I should add as well that um, when you are doing a respray of a locomotive please wear goggles and gloves and a face mask West Blythe A M P D. <coughs> Yes, I got that right. West Blythe MPD, who came up with a suggestion of the signs that you see there um, on the gate. Check them out as well. Um, they're progressing well with a Northumberland set layout. Kirkton Road Junction is in the same region and era as my layout and David Watson's Dean Park station layout. And as I say, there's always far too many layouts to mention each month, but Dudley Central is set in the West Midlands in the privatisation era. And I forgot to mention him before, but Strathpeffer Junction. Now David, who runs Strathpeffer Junction, I hope you're keeping very well. And uh, 
hopefully all is good with you uh, because I know you have been in hospital recently so um, I say if we, uh, let us know how you are please be much appreciated I also just want to actually um, make a point as well that whilst I um, give these layouts a, a plug as well I, I hope that they actually serve as an inspiration to you as well when it comes to doing your own layout remember it, it, it will be your layout you're free to do what you want with it um, and you never know it might make a, a very good layout it might even be better than mine one last um, thing I'll point out to you is on Facebook if you go and look for the Model Railway YouTube Community Group, I think that's what it is, but for goodness sake, please, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Then I would be much appreciating that. Uh, but it's, I think it's M-R-Y-C-G. Check them out on Facebook if you haven't already done so. So that's the end of this month's layout update. I'll be back in a wee while though with a, a review of my class 47 fleet, that'll be over two or three videos and I'm hoping to also do a video um, explaining sleeper trains to you as well. So thank you very much for watching this month's uh, update and we'll see you soon. Goodbye for now.